Hello everybody and welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. In the 1950s with the development of the helicopter into civilian applications, it didn't take long before there were grand schemes that made much of a soon to be realised city centre to city centre air taxi service. Sabina ran such an air taxi service for a while and Westland, frustrated by the lack of government commitment, even built the London heliport at Battersea with the intention of serving the main London airports of the time, being Southend, Gatwick and London Airport itself. There was even a more ambitious scheme to service international city centre destinations with the ferry Rotterdam. Seventy years later, we know that none of those ambitions were fully realised, if they were realised at all. One might be wondering just why the world seems to be becoming giddy again with what is known as urban air mobility and a new industry in electrically powered vertical takeoff and landing vehicles or, as they're known, eVTOL. The marketing now speaks of visions of so-called vertiports co-located with rail, metro and bus stations and a solution to traffic congestion via the exploitation of the airspace above the congested spaces. Today, we have a multitude of startup companies pitching their eVTOL machines with suggestions of skies filled with air taxis. Let us turn, therefore, to global taxi name Uber. Uber predicts an airborne air traffic management environment using a network of one-way sky lanes flown by pilots operating first under visual flight rules or VFR but eventually automating traffic management and separation anti-collision permitting freer routing choices. Uber have partnered Jaunt Air Mobility who have created this eVTOL craft called ROSA or Reduced Rotor Operating Speed Aircraft. The ROSA handles VTOL duties using that large, slow, powered top rotor. It needs no tail rotor to balance the main rotor torque, since there are four large electric props along the wing. These keep the aircraft from going into a tailspin while it's hovering, and then provide forward thrust to bring it up to cruise speed. Once it's got some speed, the top rotor comes completely unloaded for low drag, high efficient flight as the wing take over lift generation. It's a development on the Carter Copter design that was first covered in 2004. Jaunt has acquired all rights to the Carter Aviation Slow Rotor Compound, the Carter's four-seat personal air vehicle demonstrator, which has completed over a thousand takeoffs and landings and a hundred hours of flight testing, reaching speeds of up to 214 miles an hour and at a max altitude of 18,000 feet, limited mainly by the visual flight conditions or visual flight rules that it had to fly under. I'll leave you with their own film. But for now, whilst new developments are exciting, and of course interesting technically, one can't help but feel we've been here before. And just as it was 70 years ago, it isn't the aeronautical technology that ultimately fails, it's the fact that the infrastructure and commercial reality lags far behind.